Knots can be incredibly frustrating when you are trying to untie them, especially when your only method to do that is to pull harder when they're stuck. And so today I'm going to do a follow-up video from my last about six ways that I have to untie stuck knots. And I'm using this string, basically, this, this small diameter cordage because it's a lot easier to get knots stuck uh, and hard and really over tightened uh, with less weight. And so if, this, if these six things work uh, on this small of rope, then it will certainly work on climbing rope or any bigger diameter. So welcome to Adventures in Reach. And if you enjoy any of this, if you find it helpful in any way, then go ahead and give it the like. And if not, then, you know, go ahead and vote against it. That's fine, too. I do use those, those votes of likes and dislikes to see if people are interested in this sort of content and if I should continue making it. All right, let's get into it. So right back here, I have a figure eight. So this is a figure eight on a bite with a loop here that I'm going to stand in. And then it's attached up here to this branch with a bowl in that we'll come back to at the end. All right, so set you back down there and I'm going to go stand on the loop of that knot and show you method number one. Well, I used a bowl in up top because they're considerably easier to untie than figure eights. And so that was pretty quick to get off. Now I'm gonna show you this here. There's one piece here that isn't that tighten because uh, not much weight was on that piece. These other pieces are, I mean, this is, I couldn't just pull this out, right? I couldn't just grab a strand and pull it. And that's where, you know, you go back to that thumbnail, right? Of like, please don't use pliers or, you know, screwdrivers or that sort of thing if you care about that rope. Um, it's, it's not super effective and it does generally damage the strands. So method number one, enters my dog's drinking dish for when we're hiking. So you can soak the knot, okay? Now, you don't have to soak it for that long. You can speed it up by kind of, you know, maybe squeezing it, working the water into there. You can improve this method by um, also using dish soap so that the strands can slide over each other a little better. But once this is wet, it generally, makes it a little easier to untie. So I've got a couple strands coming out. Yep, there we go. All right, here we go. There, so now now you can see it's coming out. and just have to work it a bit. And again, I don't have uh, dish soap with me, so I didn't do that, but um, you can see that water certainly does help to kind of loosen it up. At the same time, uh, if your rope is wet and then weighted while it's wet and then it dries out, that knot's gonna be way harder to get undone. So just the opposite of that. I'll tie it back up there. And another figure eight. The second method is actually hammering. Now you can use an actual hammer and you can also use a rock. Now. This one, I'm guessing I'm gonna have some comments and feel free to be one of those, but um, I'm guessing I'm gonna have some comments that you know this is kind of controversial because you're hammering and potentially damaging that line. And so these, these first ones are not my favorites. They do work very, very well. Uh, and think if you're using an actual hammer on a flat surface, like uh, something that's metal and clean, then you may be totally fine, right? If you're using rocks, try to use flat rocks. If, you're, if you only have one flat rock, then do it on top of a log or something. So just try to be nice to your rope. All right, so like I was talking about, I'm not gonna use this portion of rock because it's got a lot of texture to it and I don't wanna damage it. I grab this little piece of wood and this rock here that has a nice flat edge to it. And I'm going to be hammering on that edge. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay this knot down on here and I'm going to have it standing up so that just like this, the tallest it can be, right, it's gonna be up. And I'm just going to hammer it. And I'm gonna spin and hammer again. 
spin and hammer. And I'm gonna do that a few times around. And all this is doing is it's taking those strands in there that are locked together and it's making them move. It's forcing them to shift, which generally makes this a bit easier to untie. Note that this is not a life safety rope. It's like I mentioned, it's my bear rope. So, you know, I'm not super concerned about it. Okay, so it's not as hard as it was when I first started. And this is where I'm actually trying not to use the other methods to untie it. But uh, at the end, when you know them all, you're really going to combine them. So it did go from a hard knot to something that is is a little more malleable. I can kind of I can kind of take and bend it, if you will. All right, now I can pull this through. All right, so like I said, I'm trying to use one method at a time, which is making this a little more difficult than it would be otherwise. Let's get to the third one. Okay, so the third method is the one that I'm doing every time I'm untying the bowline off of the branch. And that is also the same as what I showed in my last video where I talked about uh, the carrick bend being the easiest knot to untie when tying two ropes together. And so the bowline has the uh, same sort of characteristic. This, I would say, is the easiest knot to untie when tying around an object. And it has this nice little relief valve right here. Okay, so there's the bowline in the back here. It has this like old horseshoe life jacket looking thing. And this, you just kind of push and you bend it and it just loosens the whole knot. So same thing I showed with the Carrick bend. You just push those little loops. So same thing with this. There's a loop around the outside here on each of these. And so we just want to push these loops away from the center mass of the knot, okay? Now again, again, keep in mind that I would normally combine all of these to take the knot apart very quickly and easily. You can see here that it's starting to separate. So once we push it far enough away like this, it gives us the ability to bring these loose strands of rope into the center. There, oh, that one just moved. Okay, on the other side move, so now, there we go. Now I can do a traditional pull and it just comes apart. For number four, I'm gonna do this in a little different order where I tied this figure eight first and then I'll tie it to the branch second. So what I'm gonna do for this, this is a little odd for this knot. Uh, this works really well and is popular in rescue uh, when you're using a water knot on webbing. I wouldn't use it in this application, like if you're tying onto your harness because uh, well, you'll see in a second. But anyway, what this is, is this is a crush object, okay? Uh, it's usually a crush carabiner, uh, but this is a, just a stick works fine, a pencil, whatever. Um, this, it doesn't really matter what it is because a rotten stick will literally uh, generally have enough strength to keep this from tightening. And so all you're doing is you're slipping that thing right in the knot, into the guts of the knot. So this really steps it up in terms of how easy it is to untie. So check this out. We'll wait it again. Give it, even give it a bounce this time. Here we go. So we've got this knot. We have our crush object in here. And you can see it did actually pull into the stick. Okay, but we're gonna take and remove this stick now. Okay, so it did, it did damage the stick a little bit. Uh, so, Maybe I'm wrong about a rotten stick, at least on this small of uh, cordage, but with bigger stuff, I've never had, I've never seen that happen, but I've only done this with like uh, climbing ropes and webbing. So that being said, you can look at this knot and see there's a big hole in there and it's basically untied. It's easy, right? Uh, that, that just gets to the heart of it by keeping space in the knot 
you just pull that space taker out and it's it's done right very very simple all right number five rolling this is easier on bigger stuff and easier on your hands with bigger cordage but essentially you just do what it sounds right so you're just rolling it around and again you're trying to agitate those little strands in there uh, just by spinning it around it's kind of like the hammering except you're you're approaching it from all sides this works especially well with webbing i found because you roll this it keeps its shape you roll webbing and it changes the shape <laughs> this one is actually not working as well as i was hoping for with this small of diameter it did loosen it some. You got that one. Yeah. I... Anyway, try it on webbing and let me know what you think. Yeah, so I am able to pull it. Again, it, it works. It helped. I don't think I could have untied it um, just by pulling it, you know, the traditional way uh, without the rolling. But... All right, let's go to the last one. Okay, so here we go. So number six, the last one here, is we're going to push. Not just push straight up, we're going to spin and push. And not from far away, we're gonna be really close, spin, then push. And we wanna do this, like on this knot, we have four different strands uh, coming in here to this knot. And so we're gonna do that at each strand until one budges just a little bit. So. Okay, here we go, here we go. I got this one here. So spin, push, and we're gonna kind of push the knot against it, right? See if I can try to do this so you can see. Spin, push, spin, push. You can see it starting to come there. Okay, so I actually have this little piece coming out and that right there uh, gave me some space as well. And then once you get that, push a couple more. And now look at that, it's all taken apart. All right, so if any of this was helpful to you uh, and you think you'll use any of this for untying uh, some rope or cordage, then go ahead and give it a like. Or if you learned anything and any of these were new, then go ahead and give it a like. If you just hated it, then, you know, feel free. And uh, in the comments, let me know which one you found most useful or which one was new to you. And if you have any other suggestions, ideas, things that you use to untie cordage or rope, then again, feel free to comment. If you're interested in joining my email list and getting a free download of a repelling gear checklist, then feel free to check the description for that link. And if you're interested in any of the equipment that I recommend for repelling and things, you can check that down there as well. If you're interested in knots and ropes, uh, more videos about that, then check up here. And if you're new to Adventures in Reach, welcome. I'm all about making inspiring adventure videos, uh, tips for how to help you make the same happen, and how to increase your confidence outdoors. So I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and choose to become an ERT to start the adventure. We'll see you next time.